my name's Megan. Hi, and I'm Chris. And we're meteorologists with the National Weather Service Office in Flagstaff, Arizona. Have you ever stopped to think how your local forecast office generates forecasts? It's a bit more sophisticated than you might think. We actually use a wide range of weather observations from radar, satellite, automated weather observations to even weather balloons. Worldwide, there are over 800 upper air observation sites with the National Weather Service hosting 92 stations alone. At 7,152 feet, the National Weather Service in Flagstaff hosts the highest upper air observation site in the United States. We do balloon launches twice a day and sometimes we do an extra launch when we're expecting severe weather. Our local Flagstaff office releases a weather balloon every day, once at 4 a.m. and once at 4 p.m. Sure makes for some early mornings. In this video, we're going to walk you through a weather balloon launch, which is one of the most important forms of information that we collect here at the National Weather Service. So come on back with us to the upper air shelter. Since the late 1930s, the National Weather Service has taken upper air observations with what we call a radio sonde. The radio sonde is a small instrument package that is suspended about 80 feet beneath a large weather balloon. As the radio sonde rises at about 1,000 feet per minute, Sensors on the radio sonde measure profiles of pressure, temperature, and relative humidity. These sensors are linked to a radio transmitter that sends measurements back to a ground tracking antenna on a set radio frequency. As the balloon is inflated with hydrogen, it gradually inflates to a diameter of about 5 feet. After the balloon is released, it expands due to the decrease in air pressure, eventually reaching a diameter of about 20 to 25 feet before bursting. After the balloon bursts, a small orange parachute attached to the balloon slows the descent of the falling radio sonde, minimizing danger to those on the ground while also preventing damage to the radio sonde itself. When a radio sonde is found and returned, it can be reconditioned to be used again in the future. Unfortunately, of the 75,000 radio sondes released by the National Weather Service each year, less than 20% are found and returned for reconditioning. You may be wondering if the instrument is tracked during its descent. Well, the answer is yes, but this is rarely done on our routine launches. The battery that powers up the instrument is water activated and it needs to be soaked for a few minutes before using. Once it's ready, the battery life lasts up to 135 minutes. Before launching, we must baseline the instrument to ensure we're receiving a good signal and that all of its sensors are reading accurately. This involves powering up the radio sonde and comparing its readings to real-time weather observations. In addition to radio tracking, which is done inside the white dome on top of the inflation shelter, the radio sonde is also equipped with GPS tracking devices. The radio sonde's GPS location in relation to the base station is then used to calculate profiles of wind speed and wind direction as the balloon ascends into the atmosphere. A typical weather balloon flight can last in excess of two hours and the radio sonde can ascend to altitudes above 100,000 feet and drift more than 180 miles from the release point. During the flight, the radio sonde is exposed to temperatures as cold as 130 degrees below zero and an air pressure that is less than 1% of what is found on the Earth's surface. If the radio sonde enters a strong jet stream, it can travel at speeds exceeding 200 miles per hour. We hope you enjoyed our video and learned something. Thanks for watching.